Good evening, good evening, dear fans, haters, and domestic energy experts. You're watching most wanted blockbuster about real Iron Man suit by Alex Lab. In this video, new repulsor, new exoskeleton, couple of new electrolyzers, more fun, more fire, and more rampage, and all this in one video. <sighs> Let's go! Two years have passed since the release of the first videos about the Iron Man repulsor and reactor. Let us take a quick look at my technical achievements to better understand what you will see today, except that I gained weight to 20 kilos and no longer fit into old exoskeleton. The first model of the Iron Man electrolytic reactor made it possible to shoot with low temperature plasma from a small repulsor and launch big and small rockets. A compact version of the reactor for everyday use could be carried with you anywhere and everywhere. A couple of laboratory models made it possible to better understand the features of the water decomposition process and make, on the basis of all the previous models, high pressure electrolyzer and use it to speed my pit bike or any other internal combustion engine and also power a real lightsaber from it. Almost all devices work in pulse mode, so I accumulated gas and then use it. But now I decided to make a thing that will work not in pulse mode, but in constant mode, to feel all the unleashed power of the heat from burning hydrogen in my own hand. And to begin with, I decided to make a model of repulsor, which Tony Stark welded pipes underwater in the second part of Iron Man. So what the idea? I want hydrogen and oxygen torch to roast from my hand, burning everything, and the entire power station would be fit in a new suit and on an exoskeleton on the arm. What needs to be done to get such a powerful torch? A bunch of hydrogen with oxygen. That is, to boost the old reactor or made a new electrolyzer, or maybe both, replace fuel tanks with bigger and stronger ones, remove the miniature devilry gas reducer from the lightsaber in order to accumulate gas under high pressure and use it at the low pressure and at the same time use gas from the electrolyzer. And this means redoing the entire gas distribution system and so everything is tight as possible. And if God forbid it will all work out, then we still have to solve the problem of cooling the repulsor, but as engineers say, that is not a problem, it's a challenge. Some of necessary pieces of iron are already in the garage and you know where to look for others, metal scrapyard and local market with spare parts from the Soviet Union. In a couple of years all this Iron Man legacy made of high quality steel, which now cannot be found at all, most likely will move to the same garage as mine, but today I was lucky. And besides other pieces of iron made of Soviet steel which can even chop diamonds, I found a brand new threading kit in factory oil and wrap in a factory Soviet bag. Just imagine, it was made and packaged before the Soviet Union collapsed and I'm the first owner. For bench testing of my new repulsor and also for purely household needs, like experimenting with plasma, cremating my own waste, cutting and welding metal, walking through doors, I decided to make a new electrolyzer, but a small nuance. An electrolyzer with such a power, which I previously saw only in YouTube videos, and the maximum power that poor wiring in the bunker can stand for 1 kW of continuous work and for imagine for an output for 2 kW at the peak. I work out all the weak points of the past models and thanks to collaboration with 6th grade Turner Mikhail, made a stainless steel pearl of the Alex Lab collection. In this model, all fittings are made from 3 or 4 stainless steel and not from brass as before. Spacers and insulating washers are made to order from fluoroplastic, the core area was recalculated in more accurate way, I changed the configuration of the circulation holes for less gas filling, so now both the reactor itself and the circulation tank are absolutely resistant to acid, alkali and even local tap water. And this model is no longer ashamed to put on mass production. The assembly diagram is almost the same as the assembly of high pressure electrolyzer, about which there is available detailed technical video on Alex Lab channel, but if you still want a separate video about manufacturing and nuances of the Hell machine, write in the comment. I recorded all the stages of the assembly on the camera and if necessary we'll make a video manual. PDF blueprints of this monster and aftercut files for laser cutting parts already available and actively downloaded for engineers of Alex Lab. Now when I have a new kilowatt toy, 
I stocked up army dry rations, Chinese noodle and energy drinks and buried myself in a bunker on two weeks of fire tests. Even 30 minute video is not enough to tell about all adventures and experiments with the ignition of hydrogen and oxygen and attempts to achieve laminar combustion of gas with the maximum speed of propagation of flame in the universe. Just know this is probably the best you can spend two weeks of your life. But I still want to share the coolest discovery. Remember the exact technical task? We need to get hold of biblically epic fiery torch from our hand to burn everything that comes to hand like the mother of dragons using brown gas as fuel with combustion temperature of almost 3000 degrees Celsius. But hydrogen and oxygen burn fast. But not just fast, but as Tarantino would say, damn fast. Why? First, because hydrogen with oxygen generated by electrolysis, these are two atoms with the ideal number of electrons for the fastest possible recombination, that is ignition, with minimal spark energy. And secondly, a mixture of hydrogen with oxygen doesn't need an oxidizer for combustion or precisely calculated mixing with air such as propane or acetylene, because this mixture already contains both fuel and oxidizer. In this case we have several parameters – gas generation rate, gas outflow rate from the nozzle, pressure in the electrolyzer, pressure after the reducer, nozzle diameter, and all these parameters affect each other. And this is the technical contradiction. With a thin nozzle to achieve a powerful torch, the gas flow rate has to be increased and eventually the flame blows out, since at the moment the gas outflow rate exceeds the flame front propagation speed, or the torch will be too thin and weak. With a wide nozzle, the torch is powerful but short due to high turbulence and dispersion and drag. You also need much higher rate of gas generation and outflow, otherwise the flame as usual sucks in and blows half the insulation to hell. And this is what I came up with two weeks after burning hydrogen on an industrial scale. I will make three nozzles, 0.6 mm each or uh, 0.2. 0236 inches, oh god when are we all going to metric. I will install them at the angle of 80 degrees to the central axis and I will make sure that their torches are concentrated in one point and merging they would form a powerful single stream of flame, well kind of like a Death Star from Star Wars. Then maybe I will overcome the technical contradiction and again I will have in my hand the dream of all YouTube teenagers. Do you remember from the school physics program such a rule? Do not connect your body to one kilowatt electrolysis station powered by a welding inverter? That's right, I don't remember either. That's why I just did it to make the first bench test. Ok, achievements! Now I can achieve a stable, powerful torch from my hand as I wanted, but there are a couple of teeny problems. The first one looks like an iPhone, everything works great as long as you are not far from the outlet, and I need is to fit all this stuff in a suit, so station must be smaller. Second, in my childish innocence, I thought that if I install the nozzles in an aluminum radiator, then this is will be enough to cool the repulsor, and the first 20 seconds of the burn is so. But then the repulsor gets hot and gently, but forcefully, tries to become part of your own hand. So two problems are portability and overheating. But as we know, engineers say, there is not a problem, it's a challenge. So, reactor. How can we boost an Iron Man reactor without changing anything in it at all? All the time before, I have used this model without circulation tank. That is, you fill in water, plug the lower hole and apply current. The reaction is in progress, but the rate of gas generation is strongly limited by the foam. If the reaction is so intense that the foam begins to pour into the upper gas outlet, I immediately reduce the current to prevent liquid from entering the system. 
But now, after hundreds of experiments with electrolyzers, we know that a flow-through system is better to use, that is, just a tank and do not change anything in the reactor itself. The electrolyte and foam now circulate freely through the system and the pure dry gas comes out through the upper hole. Obviously, the main thing is that the circulation tank is higher in the level than the reactor, so in a suit it is better to set it on the shoulder or on the back, or perfectly on your head. And if foam is no longer a problem, then power can be increased and inject current into the electrolyzer from the assembly of lithium-ion batteries even with a little overheating but with much greater gas output. What about nozzle overheating? I haven't come up with anything more elegant than install on it forced liquid cooling system with a microprocessor radiator, pump and heat exchanger. By the way, in winter it will be possible to use a parasitic head to heat the suit. So the main task are solved, it remains only to remake the ignition system, add a flashback arrestor and a new solenoid valve, a reducer, new cylinders and collect from all this a suit. But to start by removing all the nuts from the inside of the exoskeleton. Now when I have more iron on me than flesh and at the first sight not everything is clear how it works, let's go over the whole new circuit. All of the suit's energy comes from 12 volts lithium batteries assembly on the belt. The current is supplied to electrolytic reactor in which water is decomposed into hydrogen and oxygen. Note that with this connection the electrolyzer performs three functions at once. It works as a combustible gas generator, it builds up pressure like a compressor and also it makes the fluid circulate like a pump or like a real human heart. A mixture of combustible gases together, foam and water, go through pipes from the pneumatic system designed for 10 atmospheres and gets into circulation tanks. Here the gas is separated from foam and water that returns to the reactor through the lower line and the dried pure gas under pressure enters the storage tanks on the shoulder. When the solenoid valve opens, gas flows through the reducer reducing the high pressure to low working pressure and through the flashback arrestor it is applied to the free nozzle in the palm of your hand. Also the valve can be opened all the time and system works in constant mode. The gas is ignited by the ignition system with a step-up block from 1.5 volts to 3000 volts. 
90% of energy goes to the reactor, the rest to control the valve and the pump of the cooling system. Antifreeze is supplied to the repulsor through pipes due to the pump and being cooled in the radiator from microprocessor circulates according to the scheme, not letting the palm stick to the metal. As you can see, with all my efforts, sometimes the flame still sucks inside, but this only comes from too close contact between the nozzle and the target. Last but not least, I want to note something I grabbed from my last trip to Italy. Hint, the last time the things was melted, most of the inhabitants of Pompeii died. That's right, this is a piece of lava from Vesuvius. Now let's see if I can melt the volcanic outburst with my new toy. Uh, Wait, it's a... <laughs> it melts! How cool it looks on screen is up to you, but the feeling of this hell machine when you hold it with your own hand is simply impossible to convey. Especially if you can relax and not piss yourself knowing that sometimes this stuff just bangs without warning. Now, if a character appears in any computer game whose superpowers are like this guy left, you know who they took as a basis. Also, now I have a DIY hydrogen cutter at the hand that can cut parts with complex profiles which cannot be cut with a grinder, and also several electrolyzers whose application is limited only by imagination. Vintage step-by-step -step PDF building instructions of Fireman reactor and the basic model of the repulsor and exoskeleton, high-pressure electrolyzer and kilowatt electrolyzer drawings in English are available for channel sponsors. Also, if you missed this video, check out the similar version of this device from my colleagues, the Hacksmith, who are the leaders on this topic on YouTube and who I would get a job with. Thanks to channel sponsors for the opportunity to do what I do. Subscribe and click the bell so not to miss the next videos in which I will upgrade all the things. Bye!